Well, my name is Hari Prasad, and uh, you know that I had Parkinson's. Over a period of time, I noticed that my tremors were increasing. I couldn't take the stress in the office. Then uh, the problem of uh, uh, cramping started. Then I realized that I could not even walk properly in the sense that uh, if I went on a walk, I used to stumble very often. I couldn't stand in one place for a long time. Uh, more important was the swinging. I kept on swinging like this. And uh, that was something that was uh, very, very obvious and and it, it did affect my work because people used to immediately notice that. Then there came a time uh, when uh, this whole thing increased to a level where uh, I just could not take it anymore. And uh, so my doctor felt that look, it's better to take the medicines now or do the operation now and hope for the best. Mr. Hari Prasad uh, saw me somewhere in 2009 with uh, progressive tremors in his left hand. Uh, we initiated on medications uh, over the next one year. He also developed stiffness in his left hand and leg. He was dragging his left leg while walking and it was become more and more obvious that it's Parkinson's disease. He responded very well to the medications initially. But in 2014, we realized that uh, now adjustments to the medications was helping to a certain extent, but it was not helping completely. So that's the time when we, when we told that we need to look at alternate treatment and the deep brain stimulation would be an ideal choice for him, uh, given this type of uh, Parkinson's disease he has. Initially, the operation, I was a bit skeptical. I was a bit skeptical about it. Uh, I was, but then I became very positive about it. Uh, I was not very sure that the doctors had done a decent job and you know, but then uh, it so turned out that they had done a fantastic job. When he was evaluated by Dr. Guru Prasad for over four years, we found that in 2013, he had become progressively worse and then subsequently we suggested to him this option of deep brain stimulation surgery. So what do we do in this surgery during the first part of the surgery that is involved insertion of the electrodes the patient is actually awake and the neurologist is also in the OT to assess the response. What we do is to insert very fine electrodes deep into this target area in the brain. Usually we tend to insert about five electrodes and out of those five, the one electrode which provides the best response with least amount of side effect is selected and a permanent electrode is placed at this side. The second half of the surgery involves connection of these electrodes to a battery which generates the electrical impulses. So what we do in the second surgery is under general anesthesia and the wires which are coming out of the head are tunneled under the skin that is none of the wires are exposed and they are tunneled under the skin and bat out and are brought out through a small incision just below the collarbone in the area in which the battery will be inserted. So once the circuit is completed we usually wait for about a week before we start programming. Mr. Hari had a wonderful response and he could even completely stop the medications after surgery and even think of taking such a long trip, almost 6,000 kilometers from Bangalore and go ahead and come without any problem. The cramping, the tremors and the swaying put together used to control me throughout the day. And uh, today I don't have any of these. And uh, the life has changed a lot. And there's no way I could drive a car. There's just no way I can drive a car. And today I'm going on a road trip. I'm going on a long road trip. I'm going from here to Bhutan and back. And uh, I feel uh, it's all because of the operation. Oh, he was so happy to have his life back, you know. Now he is able to do everything on his own and he went to Delhi for a week by train all by himself and trust me I never had even one minute of uh, anxious uh, anxiousness so he is like my Hari has come back to the original person and thanks to Columbia Asia Hospital.